So tell me, what was it about uh, Mr. Harrigan's phone that made you want to write and direct it? I thought that there were a lot of different themes. I thought of it when I read it kind of a little like The Body by Stephen King that was turned into the movie Stand By Me, and that there's a, a coming of age story, but it's kind of paranormal. And there's an uneasiness and a creepiness that's kind of just under the surface a little bit. And I appreciated that. I also appreciated the you know, one of the themes about, you know, technology and the good and the bad um, and then, you know, how, how we're all affected by it. So those themes, especially during COVID, when everybody was locked down and this opportunity came to me, I thought this would be fun to explore. Do you consider this a horror film out and out? No, no. Okay. That was one of the things there. Yeah. It, I, I thought right off the bat, it's not a horror film. It's kind of like a brother's grim cautionary fairy tale if you will um mm -hmm. and so i appreciated the relationship between mr harrigan and craig as the center of the story and how you know how they have more in common than they than they, they might think and then how technology affects that relationship um and what it does to them both at the, at the beginning initially good and then is it bad? Is it good? I don't know. But I just like the questions raised. But no, I don't think of it as a hard. Nobody, nothing jumps out of the closet and eats you. It is, though, um, dealing with the paranormal and, you know, kind of ghosts and stuff like that. Um, so what was it that kind of made you want to jump into this kind of uh, supernatural arena? You know, I, I didn't really, it's funny you say that because I can understand and I understand your question and I, I agree. I would probably ask that same question. To me, it wasn't trying to dip my toe into the supernatural as much as I was just drawn to the characters mm -hmm. and how loss affects you, whether you're in your eighties or whether you're a, a young boy. And the fact that they have, we come to find out a, a certain shared loss that they're both there, there's a sadness about both these little boys. One happens to be in his 80s and a billionaire, but I enjoyed kind of opening that up, really leaning into that and having them be best best friends and have more in common than you would think. And so that was the central relationship that really drew me to it. The other was, was, was uh, the gravy on top. Can you talk about the differences between working with an elder statesman like Donald Sutherland and a young man like Jaden Martell? First, they're both unbelievable actors. And I don't say, oh, Jaden's an unbelievable young actor. I say he's an unbelievable actor. Mm -hmm. And I would quote Donald on that. I mean, after two days of them working together, Donald called me over. He called me governor and he was like, governor, come here for a second. I'd come over and he whispered in my ear. He goes, Jaden is a fine, fine actor. He said he is challenging me in all the best ways. And I said, good. We, you know, we, we cast well, but it's fun. <laughs> it was fun to watch their interplay, interplay because they really were just two fine actors with a very special bond, both on and off screen. Did Donald Sutherland have any trouble with the, with the technological aspect of the phones or anything because no he's very, he was he has his own iphone okay. or whatever and he does it all and everything but he was amazed when we props brought out all the old phones the different uh -huh. brands and things and he got that first iphone and he goes it's so little <laughs> he, was, he said my fingers won't fit um so but we were all kind of amazed at that you know Jaden in, included um I was Gonna say, and and Jaden similarly, I imagine he was probably barely born when the first iPhones came out. Yeah, and um, yeah, so uh, and he looked at it the same way. He goes, "Wow, it doesn't have anything on it. You know, it doesn't have any of the stuff I were used now on it." But um, but it was good that he was really adept at it. And Donald, uh, being a fine actor, did a good job of pretending he had never held a phone like that before. Mm -hmm. um, so that's fun to watch. His his growth and learning about the phone, I think, is one of the 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 fun the fun aspects of the film. I know that you see this more as a as a character piece, but did you enjoy the supernatural aspects of it? Was this something you would like to explore further? Yeah, I would definitely. I enjoyed um, working, you know, with our department heads and also with John Schwartzman, our DP, and talking about lenses and talking about where we wanted to put the camera 
so a lot of times very low angle on the floor. And the idea being that we're going to present this as we're going to make you a little uneasy or attempt to make you a little uneasy. This is not a normal, it's not normal coverage of a scene. And it's kind of slowly creeping along all the time, just in aid of that uneasiness and getting under your skin. It's still normal, but there's, why am I thinking there's something off about this? Mm -hmm. So that was really, really fun. That was really fun. Okay. And what do you have coming up next? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm writing some stuff right now, so we'll, we'll see, you know, something, something else different and fun, I hope. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Elise. I appreciate it.